Welcome to the PVM Nuzlocke. In this challenge, I'm starting with no gear and no items, and I've ordered every single boss fight in RuneScape by difficulty. We're gonna start at the easy bosses and work our way all the way up to the most difficult boss fights in the game. Winning the challenge is simple. All I have to do is progress through each boss, killing them exactly one time. But there's a catch. The only money I get for upgrades, for gear, and for supplies is the money that is dropped from the previous boss kills. And because I'm only killing each boss one time, this is going to be extremely difficult. But that's not all. To make it just a little bit harder, we're not going to be allowing any necromancy at all for this challenge. I want to see what I can do without it. We'll be starting off with some of the oldest, most iconic boss fights in the game. And if I can make it there, we'll be finishing off the challenge with Solo Solak, Solo Virago, 1000% Enrage Zamorak, and last but not least, 4000% Enrage Telos. With that said, let's begin. Let's throw him in legacy mode. All right, let's activate our Malevolence Curse and let's go. Dude, we're absolutely just smoking him. All right, and just like that, the first boss is down. What is our loot? Okay, we got the mask part five, which I believe has zero value. And we got bones. We've got 113 coins to our name. Dragoth Nern has a robust drop table, but unfortunately, there's an option to not roll anything. And that's exactly what we did here. We got the absolute worst drop possible, which is of course just a pile of bones. But still, 113 GP is a whole lot better than no GP. And at this point, I need all the money I can get. Our next challenger is the Tormented Wraith, a boss that can only be killed in full black equipment as well as black weapons. And fortunately for us, because it's required to kill the boss, we're given a free set just for this boss. So no need to buy anything. Let's go in with the gear that we're given and hopefully we can roll some good loot. All right, Tormented Wraith, boss number two, coming right up. There's the Tormented Wraith. Surely we just absolutely clap him. Oh, that's easy. Easy boss, but what about the loot? The loot is everything. 15 Chaos Runes, yes. Okay, 2.2K. This might be winnable. Second boss off the list, so we've got 2K of Chaos Runes. My next challenger is the King Black Dragon, one of the most iconic bosses in RuneScape. Unfortunately for me, inflation has hit the RuneScape economy pretty hard, and an anti-dragon shield is gonna cost me 3,000 coins, which is more money than I have. So we're just gonna have to go in without one. If I can position the King Black Dragon perfectly underneath my character with walk on, I should be able to walk him all the way around the room without him attacking me at all. If this walking method works, I should be able to get a kill at the King Black Dragon without any kind of anti-fire protection. Okay, so now, in-gen slaughter. Go, slaughter! Activate the sigil! Look at the damage! I am gonna run out of prayer. Okay, I gotta turn my prayer off. Okay, we're still good. We're still good. King Black Dragon without an anti-fire absolutely obscene hit the cade and see you idiot 25k that is a great drop to the grand exchange with the king black dragon handled it's time for our next challenger which is the chaos elemental the chaos elemental is not a hard boss but he is a very annoying boss because he will unequip your items randomly throughout the entire fight and because i have no interest in having to continually put all my gear back on i'm just gonna fill my invent up with random items so let's hit up some general stores buy some 1 gp items and then head over to the chaos elemental if we're lucky here we could get a massive drop worth millions of coins but more likely than not we're gonna get a bunch of random supplies it's not gonna be worth much and we're gonna have to keep on going okay beautiful okay so we're gonna buy 10 shears 10 jugs and eight bowls wait the bowls were four each oh teleported okay cool walk the slaughter okay chaos elemental nice and easy here nothing to be concerned about i saw the ominous shadow of the cape cell i was like wait i hope that isn't an additional enemy wait actually wait i'm kind of getting clapped I'm splashing everything too. Wait, wait, this is like actually close. Get a little rejuvenate action going. Chaos Elemental, down. Please something good. How much is that worth? 6K, ooh, that's not great. Okay, that's not optimal. But uh, you know what, it's better than nothing. We might even just keep the sharks and use them. Next up, we've got the first boss that has potential to make us an absolute ton of money. We get to do a full Barrows run without including Akrase or Linza because those are quest locked. After a ton of research, looking at things like a black salamander and a possible magic setup, I've decided that I'm fine with what I have. As much as buying some upgrades would make this a lot easier, I think I can get this done with the black dagger and the wooden shield. And in a challenge like this, where money is so important, if I can get through this without spending a single GP, that's just a massive win. Dude, there's no way I can do a full Barrows run, but I am allowed to bank between brothers. Wait, I'm actually cooking. Look at me go. 
Is a black dagger the strongest weapon in the game? Bro, this thing needs a nerf. Nah, ain't no way. We just body Darok with a freaking black dagger. 57% hit chance is way better than I thought we would have. I I'm not even gonna lie. Feels like Aram is very weak. Cause he's just trying to debuff me the whole time. He ain't even hitting me. And I believe the optimal amount of Barrow's run kills is 13, right? Okay, these skeletons are taking too long. I give up. <laughs> Dude, look at that tendril. Okay, Chaos Roar into a bleed is just a colossal combo. It's so good. Carol, gone. Whoa, 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 Accuracy, gone. Oh, no, 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 no. Square. Go, get out, get out, get out. 1600 damage? Okay, you know what? No, there's no one in here. I gotta rest in here. Because Accuracy is gonna spawn again and get like two free hits. There are Barrow's items that are worth 25 mil. So if we get the right item here, we could be in a really, really, really good spot. Come on, please something good. Um, that seems pretty good. 146k. I don't know if that's like an average Barrows run, if that's above, if that's below, but I think that's great. I mean, we like quintupled our money right there. Unfortunately, we didn't get a unique from Barrows, which would have completely changed the entire challenge. But still, a good chunk of runes is worth a good chunk of money. So let's move on to the next boss, which is Bork. If you're anything like me, you forgot that Bork existed, and this unlocked some kind of crazy repressed memory from 10 or 15 years ago. But after a long run through the Chaos Tunnels, we've made it there. It's time to take on the Borkler. Wait, he's absolutely bonking me! Wait, 500s through prayer? Wait, he's like actually hard. Okay, I actually need like good flicks here. Unironically good flicks. Whew. Oh my god, the walking strat's actually saving me right now. Oh god, minions! Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Why are they doing so much damage? Okay, I am completely out of prayer. Let me hit the penance, let me hit the penance, let me hit the penance. Pray ranged? Why is Bork so hard? Flick melee, right for the melee hit. Back to range. And we've done it. Beautiful. <sighs> okay. What did we get for loot here? 4k? That's it? Dude, you actually hate to see it. I, I mean, to be fair, I only ate 750 GP of food. So it is profit. It's time for our first big upgrade. We don't really need it for this boss, but for the next two bosses after this, which are Calphite Queen and Exiled Calphite Queen, we're gonna need to be using multiple combat styles. And because of that, I need to pick up gear in either ranged or magic. I've decided to go with magic because I think it's gonna be a little more useful and the base level gear is extremely cheap. So now with my brand new Graphorlic wand, it's time to hit up the giant mole. Dude, look at the damage I'm doing right now. Wait, holy. One could even say, holy moly. Why did they give the mole 100,000 life points? That's actually what I want to know. What was the thought process? That is the mole done and dusted. I gotta say, having actual damage gear is so much better. Like tier 60 stuff is actually solidly decent. All right, what do we got here? We got a mole skin, some mole claws. It's actually not horrible. Unfortunately, our main drop is ironstone spirits though. They don't... Of course, I would risk my life at the giant mole and walk away with stone spirits. But still, I've been smart with my money up to this point, and because of that, we have enough money to buy ourselves a dragon dagger, which is a level 60 melee weapon. And with that dragon dagger, it's time to go to the Calphite Queen. I'm very concerned that the Calphite Queen, and especially the exiled Calphite Queen, which is right after this one, could be a potential run killer. These bosses are very hard to hit and very hard to take down, and it's possible that my gear just might not be good enough. But there's only one way to find out, and we need to keep pushing. Surely nothing's about to go really wrong right now. Okay, let's go. It's not walkable. Okay, they went back through a bunch of old bosses, and they added anti-walk, which is very, very frustrating. So we're just going to start spamming defenses. Okay, that's huge damage, but it's also huge self-damage. That was a mistake. I cated just to stop hitting myself because I was taking so much damage. Okay, next phase. I need the Graphulic Wand on, Batwing Book on, and let's go. So now, Exiled, I think we'd probably die. But we're gonna need like the most ridiculous defensive rotation for Exiled, because Exiled is like five times harder than regular. Something big, please. Uh, Rune Arrows, how much are they worth? 15K, okay, that's actually decent. You could, you could do worse. You could do worse than that. Oh my God, okay. Dude, look at all the minions. Please, I'm getting absolutely walloped. Wait, I'm actually getting clapped. <laughs> eat food, eat food, eat food, build adrenaline, eat food, build adrenaline, and I'm poisoned. Ugh, oh my God. <laughs> Just give me a chance to heal up under Cade. Oh dude, I'm poisoned too. This might need to be a we go again type situation. Like, look at this, dude, I, I cannot survive this. It's like not even the boss itself, it's just the freaking minions. It's time to start spamming defensives. Help! <laughs> I am completely out of food, completely. Why are there so many minions in the room? Come on, come on. I'm out of runes! No, I'm out of runes! Uh, is there any way for me to proceed here with no runes? 
Hold, hold, hold. Oh my god, I lost my bar! Where's my bar? Help! 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 Alright, we need more raids. That hit. We're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. We're actually saved the run completely with that heal from the minions. What's the drop? Are you kidding me? A collection of sharks? That's it. And just like that, we have taken out the exiled Calphite Queen. And let me tell you, it was never even close. But unfortunately, things don't get easier from this point, because the next boss we have to take on is the Dagonoth Kings. And at this point, we're going to introduce the first special rule. Instead of being able to kill the Dagonoth Kings one at a time, we actually have to one-trip them. So in one singular invent, I'm going to have to take out all three Dagonoth Kings back to back to back. Not only does this mean that I need every combat style of gear, but doing it in one trip is going to be really difficult. Let's spend all the money we have on an Abyssal Whip, a Salamander, and a small amount of ammo and hope we can make it through. My main concern here is that I'm going to take so long to kill these Dagonoth Kings that once I kill a Dagonoth King, it's possible it will respawn and resume attacking me before I have a chance to kill the other ones. If I'm getting hit by more than one of them at the same time, I'm going to die very quickly. There's Dagonoth Rex down. Any droppers, please? Are you kidding me? An untradeable Fremenic blade that I can't sell. Wait, I need to go fast. Wait, I just realized. Because, be, yeah, before the respawn. Okay, this might have been a throw. Oh, God. Okay, they're both hitting me now. Yeah, so for this, the only difficult part is whenever Rex spawns, I'm going to be in a world of pain. No! Already? Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. LP! And that is all three DKs done. What's the drop? Come on, give it to me. A dragon hatchet! Wait, let's freaking go! That's actually huge! Dagonoth Kings absolutely obliterated! As exciting as it is to get a Dragon Hatchet, unfortunately, it carries almost no value. And that's even more annoying because it's on the same drop table as a ring that is worth over 10 million coins. Surely that slow sells for 75. Surely. After the Dagonoth Kings, we have to take on God Wars Dungeon 1. And just like the Dagonoth Kings, we've got to one-trip them. So we've got to kill all four generals in one inventory. But this isn't actually so bad, because anytime I can pull myself out of combat, I can use the Persistent Rage Relic to continually funnel myself adrenaline, which is going to lead to infinite healing. This is a technique I'm going to use a lot for the remainder of this challenge, but especially for God Wars Dungeon 1, this is extremely helpful. Bang. And then Cade now. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot. He's got like crazy magic resistance. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. I ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Whoa, 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 damage. All right, we're good. We got it. Um, seventeen magic logs. That's actually decent. That's not bad. You could do worse. And I do get my 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 free kill of each of the minions as well. A thousand gold. Two sharks. Thousand gold. Beautiful. All right. Krill next. Okay. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. All right, surely we got it here. And see you, idiot. Goodbye, Krill. What's the drop? Three stone spirits? You're actually kidding me. <sighs> Dude, I'm like about to die. Nah. <gasps> oh my god. Whoa! Eat food. My mouse isn't working. Oh my god, it's happening again. <laughs> All right, finish the boss. Let's go. Any droppers? Uh, you know what? One large salvage is better than one large stone spirit. I will actually gladly, gleefully accept that. Uh, so last stop, we've got to do the bird. Back to walking. All righty. Done. All right. Please, something good. Uh, two crush nests, 20k. You know what? I am actually okay with 20k. You could, you could do a lot worse than that. After God Wars, we're heading back to the giant mole, because of course, the giant mole has a hard mode. This boss should be easy, so let's not waste any money on upgrades, and let's just get the kill nice and quick. Yeah, I'm actually not sure what to expect out of hard mode mole. I know that the boss fight got buffed recently for, like, no reason. And I know it's, like, a lot more difficult than it used to be for reasons that don't really make sense. Please, 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 please finish the kill. That was a PR. All right, kill done. What do we get? Stone spirits. And, of course, we're going to get a regularly scheduled stone spirits drop. These don't sell for 2 GP. Someone put me out of my misery. I have no idea why the Corporeal Beast is so early on in this challenge. It is a way more difficult boss than anything else we've done up to this point, and I don't even have enough money for a spear, so I'm going to be dealing half damage however I take this boss on. I honestly don't even know if this is possible, and we're going to have to be very creative with strategies, but hopefully with the right strategy and the right execution, we can get this done. Big 2k res? I'm out of prayer too. Oh my goodness. Okay, uh... Wait, why is Corp healing? 
Is it from the... Where did my Beast of Burden go? No, no, no. It, you used to be able to bring a legendary pet, and legendary pets would not would not die. This has been a big hurdle, I'm not gonna lie. After numerous failed attempts and my coin pouch getting lower and lower and lower as I waste more and more money on food, I realize that there's only one way to be able to deal enough damage to kill the corp, and that is gonna be with ranged and ruby bolts. Every time you get a ruby bolt special, it's gonna do a nice little chunk of damage. So hopefully, with my rune crossbow and my dragon hide armor, we can manage to get a corp solo. Are we ready? I mean, at least we've got armor this time. It's actually decent for damage reduction. Just remember, the hit chance isn't supposed to be good. It's just supposed to be good enough. 2k, big res. No, it healed. No, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. I'm going to laugh my ass off if I get an invent of tuna potatoes after eating an invent of tuna potatoes to get this kill. Please. Got it. Let's go, dude. Come on, something. Please, something. Please, something. No. 22k? Oh, my... Corp is done, though. That's the important thing. After just barely surviving the Corp Beast, it's time to do Jad and the Fight Caves. And I am not worried about this at all. But before we head in, why don't we upgrade our style just a little bit and get ourselves a beautiful set of Batwing. Okay, now we're styled. So, Fight Cave time? It's Jad time. Whoa, right on me! Whoa, 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 okay. I don't know how fair that was, good sir. That's actually good for the healers. It means my positioning is better, but... Wait, why is my hit only 64%? Did I miss a prayer flick? No, surely not. You're embarrassing me! I did it. I missed a lot of prayer flicks there. 49 minutes that took? I've got a fire cape, and I got 16,000 tackle. Can I just buy a whole whack of these fire runes? Wait. Okay, let's see what we got for all of our tackle. Wait, that's actually like 40k. Wait. You know what? I'm actually not even mad about that. We have done we've done worse at bosses, although not bosses that took 40 minutes. With Jad handled, it's time for the next boss, which is the Queen Black Dragon. But fortunately, I've got enough money at this point that I can actually just buy a super anti-fire and we shouldn't have to worry about it too much. First things first, learned this lesson. Let's anti-fire up and let's go. The Queen Black Dragon hits pretty hard, but as long as I do the mechanics correctly, I shouldn't have anything to worry about. And the loot potential from this boss is absolutely astronomical. We could get more money than the entire sum of money we've made from every boss up to this point from one single loot chest. We just need to get lucky. I'm doing well with the soul splits, actually. Dude, why is the soul bodying me right now? There you go, now he's dead. Oh, I did get a Grot Worm. Okay, so I'm actually gonna kill the Grot Worm. No! Resistant to range attacks! <laughs> Are you kidding me, QED? <laughs> uh, we're fine. All right, kill's done. Dude, a sub 345? Come on. Nobody does it like he does. All right, in three, in two, in one. Are you kidding me? Which, of course, didn't happen. No, thanks, QBD. I totally needed seeds. That's exactly what I wanted. The singular drop on the loot table with the lowest GP value. Th this could be a complete run killer. All right. Despite the bad drop from the Queen Black Dragon, it's not all doom and gloom because I finally have enough money to buy myself an Abyssal Wand, which is an extremely powerful weapon and it's a huge 20 tier upgrade over what I was using before. This should be a massive boost to my damage and my accuracy, and I'm finally starting to feel pretty good about my gear setup. So now let's head back into God Wars 1 and knock out the hard mode versions. The first three are nothing special. We're going to start things off with General Gardor. A personal record, all right, give me something good. Are you kidding? Again? And then after that, we're gonna head to Krill. Yeah, one subjugation piece would be pretty life-changing. War Priest boots, no! <laughs> Any killers? Okay, please. What do you got for your boss? Oh my god, a ward! Wait, is it worth something? I don't know if that's worth anything! It's half a mil! It's half a million coins! Yes, 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 yes! Okay, big, 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 big. Let's freaking go, dude. Okay, that's actually huge. Any other piece is like eight mil, but you know what? I honestly, beggars can't be choosers. This is more money than the entirety of the rest of our money. Let's try 450K. Okay, we're fine. 445K. You might be thinking that I got pretty lucky at Krill to get a unique, but then when you compare the unique that I got to the value of every other subjugation piece on the drop table, you'll then understand why I feel like the luckiest unlucky person in all of Gilador. If I'd gotten any other subjugation piece, the next 15, 20 bosses in this challenge would have been a piece of cake. With Krill out of the way, it's Zillion time. Okay, go. Go, go, go. Did it work? There you go. What'd I get? 
You know what? Two large plated salvage is solid. I will gleefully accept two salvage. It is better than two stone spirits. And then last but not least, we're heading to hard mode Criara, which is actually an extremely difficult boss. This bird deals more damage than a Canada goose, and if I'm taking damage from hard mode Kree, I'm gonna run out of food in like 10 seconds. So let's plan to walk it just like we did at the King Black Dragon. I'm stunned. Gone. Beautiful. What a good kill. Uh, Black Dragon Eye. 122 Black Dragon Eye? Wait, that's like as good as the ward. Straight up, that's as good as the ward. Okay, get me out of here. So we got some money now. After hard mode God Wars 1, it's time to take on the four God Wars Dungeon 2 generals, which are significantly more difficult, but they also have the potential to drop tens of millions of coins. These are the first bosses we're fighting with some real big ticket drops, and they're not exceptionally rare either. So if we can be even a little bit lucky here, we're gonna be a multi-millionaire. Oh my God, Vindy, you gotta chill. Oh, oh no, barricade! <laughs> oh no. Gone. Are you kidding me? And please give me a drop of some kind. Let's get it. Uh, four crystal keys. You know what? That's way better than Vindicta. I'm actually totally fine with that. And you know what? I actually used so few supplies there. I think we can one trip it. The twin Furbies. Wait, why am I getting absolutely walloped right now? Why is this boss so hard? Help! Nah, 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 run. Okay, twins are genuinely very difficult. Help, help, help! Mm -mm. No! Get there! Around the bend! I did it. Wait, 160 ashes! Wait, are those worth anything? Or did some random new loot table completely tank the value of them to be worth nothing? What? Why are they like 7 GP each? That's actually such an L. Are you kidding me? After handling three of the four generals, we've got to deal with Greg. And unfortunately, with terrible gear, Greg will absolutely shred me and deal a ton of damage. But there's an interesting strategy we can employ here that's going to make the boss fight a whole lot easier. There's a seldom used aura called Poison Purge, and what it will do is it will make poison damage heal you instead of damaging you for a very short period of time. But if I extend it to two hours, it should last long enough for one singular Greg kill. So that's exactly what we're going to do. If done correctly, the poison damage we're going to take from Greg is extremely significant, and we're going to turn all of that into heals, which should make it so that I'm able to kill the boss. Okay, Poison Purge is absolutely clutching right now. Look at it. It's, 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 you know what's funny? We've got to do all this crazy tech and activate this specific aura and do all this stuff. This is literally just the same as the Necromancy Ghost. What do you got for me, boss? This was a good kill. Good strat, good kill. 11 Dragon Stones. That's actually pretty good. That should be like 100k. It's... Wait, Dragon Stones are that cheap? Just kidding. It's 50k, but uh, that's God Wars 2 done. Despite the lack of loot, the next boss is apparently a bit of a freebie. It's the Abomination. And I'm saying apparently because I've actually never killed the Abomination outside of the quest. So this is going to be a brand new experience for me. If I die to this boss, I'm going to be so tilted. Did it work? Boom! Look at the mines! See you idiot! Hold, hold, hold. Should have mind your own business! I, I'm barricading. Okay, I, I don't know how to kill him. I did it! I killed him! Wait, why does I feel like this is better loot than like a lot of places? As if I got more money from this place than I did Vindicta? Dude, I'm actually rich! What's next on this stupid, stupid list? The Moister? After the Abomination, we've got to take on the Magister, and this is going to be a very difficult one, because hit chance is very hard to come by at this boss. Despite him wearing regular robes, they must be lined with Kevlar or something, because he is impossible to hit. And because of that, we're actually going to use our handy dandy Dragon Hatchet that I wasn't able to sell for 30k earlier in the challenge. If you use the Dragon Hatchet special attack called Clobber, it's actually going to give you a significant increase to your hit chance for the next 60 seconds. So it's a bit of a blessing that we weren't able to sell it because it's gonna be extremely clutch at this boss. It's Magister time, let's get it. Not the minions again, please no, please no, please no, please no. Just eat, just eat, just eat. I'm spam eating, got it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, that was really bad. 156K? Okay, that's nice. Unfortunately, after the Magister, things just get tougher and tougher because the next set of bosses are all three Rex Matriarchs and they have to be killed in one single trip. If I fail at any point, I have to drop all of the loot that I received from the previous Rex Matriarchs and try again. There ain't no way I'm killing the Rex Matriarchs with this. 
All three of the Rex Matriarch bosses hit like an absolute bus, have a ton of mechanics, and they also are extremely hard to hit unless you use their specific weakness. So we're gonna have to make some changes to our gear and basically spend all the money that we have on upgrades. For melee, I'm gonna buy whichever pieces of Necronium armor I'm able to afford, and we're gonna go in with dual-wielded dragon daggers as the melee Rex Matriarch is weak to stab. All the way to full? Okay, this is gonna actually be bad. Bro, I knew I was fighting a Rex Matriarch. I knew I was fighting the Guzzle Goat. Dude, even when you AFK this boss, you don't get that mechanic. <laughs> All right, this is Rex Matriarch 1. About to be done. Oh, dude, I had to eat a lot of food, but it's fine. Big. Okay, good start, good start, good start. First one down, what's the loot? It's the Elite Clue Scroll! Wait, this is so exciting! For the Magic Rex Matriarch, we need to be using fire spells, but I'm also gonna buy 50 nature runes so that we can stun him in place with Entangle. Assuming my Entangles are able to hit, this boss should be the easiest of the three. I am a little scared about Pentherakin, so I'm gonna go like this, please. <gasps> oh my god, dude. Okay, can I just say, these were the worst bosses ever released into RuneScape. I'm out of nature runes! <gasps> I just used up every nature rune that I had! Got it. With the meta for the free runes. Beautiful kill. All right. Something good, please. Uh, 87k. I like it and it's stackable too. And then for the third and final boss, he is weak to bows. So even though we have a higher tier weapon than an Elder Shortbow, the Elder Shortbow is actually going to deal a whole lot more damage and hit a lot more accurately. Easy. Dude, I'm actually eating all of my food right now. 9k, 3k. Come on. All three Rex Matrix. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Done. We're locked in. We get to keep all of our loot. Dude, I don't know if I want to keep all my loot. What is that? <laughs> okay, it's fine. You know what? It's better than nothing is what it is. Rex Matriarchs completed. Although we didn't get any valuable uniques, we did get an elite clue, and clue scrolls are allowed to be completed, so this is actually a massive drop for us. This has the potential to contain a die, but beyond that, the common drops from clue scrolls are extremely significant, and even if I make a million coins or two, that's an absolute ton of money at this point in the challenge. So let's get our elite clue done before we head to the fight kiln. Okay, we have completed our elite clue from the Rex Matriarchs. You know what? I will take 1.3 mil. That's actually really, really sick. <laughs> Dude, that's more than any PVM drop we've had so far. Yeah, there you go. 980k in the bank. Can we take a second to look at my gear really quick? This might be the most scuffed fight kiln run in RuneScape history. Are you kidding me? I think it's okay. I just think these waves are the hardest ones. <laughs> that's such a cope. I'm on wave five. Other than just surviving the fight kiln, you might be wondering if I'm going to select a cape or if I'm going to select an onyx. An onyx would be over a million coins if I sold it, but I'm going to be taking the cape because the cape can be upgraded into a Zuck cape later on in the challenge. For later on in the challenge, I'm going to want to get myself a magic Zuck cape. And because of that, as long as I do the majority of my damage with magic, we should be good to move on from this boss fight. But unfortunately for right this second, that means we're not going to be making any money from the fight kiln. Dragon daggers on. Melee prey on. Oh, he's just stuck. Huh. I was trying to do something really cool. Ah! What the crap? Jed, how did you melee me through a wall? Oh my god! No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Ain't no way you melee me through a wall! That's a wall! A solid wall! A physical wall! A physical, physical wall made of physical matter that you just don't punch me through. Stupid Jad. Now I'm gonna lose the run and get blamed. 48% hit chance. Overloading. <laughs> it's okay. Well, that didn't last long. <laughs> I wanted to save it, but not, not with 48% hit chance. Oh my god, I did no damage. That was with the overload? I mean, look at this invent. Okay, can we just like put pay some attention to it? Desert Souls. I'm actually doing full proper bridging with prayer switches. Like, we're, we're kind of sick with it. This is in, it, it's kind of nuts that we've actually managed to complete it with, with this setup. Are you ready? Go. See you, idiot. Okay, good. It's the mage cape. With our brand new, absolutely beautiful cape, it's time to hit up normal mode Karapak. And this next set of bosses is extremely important because although they shouldn't be terribly difficult, they're part of Elder Godwar's dungeon. And even for the normal modes, the loot that they drop is absolutely ridiculous. Dude, it's funny to think that this is like easier than Exiled Calphite Queen in terms of how much sustained damage I'm taking. <laughs> that is really, really weird when you think about it that way. It doesn't really make sense, but... All right, so we're heading into last phase. So this is where we actually need to like 
I'm gonna warp time, I'm gonna Devo, and then I'm gonna Sunshine. And then after this, see how the damage is getting chonkier and chonkier every single hit? I'm gonna debilitate, and then I'm gonna have to Devo again. Big res, there we go. Okay, this last phase is actually kinda hard. I'm not gonna lie, the last phase is actually a very, very specific rotation where you just get clapped. But that is a carry back kill dud. What did I get for drops? Let's see here. How did I do? Is it good or not good? 800k? Bro, I'm trying I'm starting to figure out where the inflation came from. I love that we killed QBD, a boss of a similar difficulty, for four hides. Why does Carapac even have a Royal Dragon hide? Alright, just double my money. After normal with Carapac, it's time for five mechanic Arch Glacier, which is also gonna be an absolute breeze. Oh god. <laughs> Dude, we just had the most authentic Glacier experience ever. Me saying, all right, everybody pause champing, getting ready for the loot, and then... All right, ready? You kill him with the cores, you get the one book. 260k! Dude, another 700k loot. That's like, kind of nuts, actually. Like, we can't be mad about that. We could have done better, obviously, but I think that's good. But after Glacier, it's time to hit up one of the most difficult bosses in the entire game, which is, of course, Hard Mode Vindicta. And I'm not even kidding about this. Hard Mode Vindicta, for whatever reason, has 600,000 life points, and the second phase in particular hits like an absolute bus. So we're gonna need to pull out all of the defensive stops for this one. You know what I'm kind of surprised? Look at the res! That was huge. I'm tanking like half of his auto attacks. And I don't know, like Animate Dead shouldn't have anything to do with that, but like I'm wearing tier 50, right? Uh, I just did it eight minutes for 33 Black Dragonite. <laughs> what an awful boss. And already I'm not feeling great about this Nuzlocke because we've yet to get any massive drops. I don't have particularly good gear. And the next boss on the list is Telos. It's 0% enraged, so it should be manageable, but I'm way under geared for a boss of this caliber. I'm not gonna have any hit chance and this is gonna be an absolute drag. And the bosses just keep getting harder and harder. 59%? Okay, well, Gothic Staff, 71. You know what? I can work with 71. Okay, it's the Dragon Hatchet is clutching. I just want to save the overload, you know? Am I going to run out of prayer? I think I'm okay. I think I could be dead on this phase, but we'll see. <laughs> I did not just splash on the golem. I'm not using any food, even though this is like really, really slow and painful. But I think it's crazy that we're 40 bosses in and I still can't afford to overload. So now I need to stun lock because I've got to hold still next to... Dude, look at the technique right now, man. So you have to let him stun me and save my freedom. Wait, I might be able to stun lock completely. Ugh. Oops, Mr. the res, that's fine. Run back. No, no, no. Oh, it's because my gear's not augmented. So I keep equipping it and then taking it off again. Okay, phase it. We got it! Yes, dude. You merely adapted to Telos. I was born it. I just splashed on a volcanic golem. Stop. So I'm not going to leave the font here because my next attack is an anime explode. G staff and we're done. Zero percent Telos in full mystics without an overload. Uh, you know what? That's actually a pretty good drop. I will happily take 98 red dragon hide. With Telos handled, it's time to go to hard mode Hellwer. And I have no idea what the devs were cooking when they made these hard mode God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses because they are incredibly difficult. Every single one of them has unique mechanics, does an absolute ton of damage, and best of all, has almost no potential to give me any good loot. My hit chance is good though with the overload. That's good. Oh my god, damage. What is this pacing? Oh my god. I'm dead. Get there, get there, get there. Please. Oh my god. Bro, who the hell made this boss? That was absurd. Dude, the whole arena is just like, Okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Man, you could say there's not much room to stand. <laughs> um, what I got? Huh. Other than almost killed. Uh, you know what? 200k of magic logs? That is better than any other hard mode God Wars loot. I'll take it. After challenge mode Hellwer, I've noticed an issue. The bosses we have to fight are extremely hard to hit because they're pretty much end game bosses, but I don't want to have to waste money on overloads. Looking at the wiki price, if I'm using overloads for all these bosses, and I might even lose money on some of these kills. That's just how expensive they are. So because of that, I'm gonna go to the Grand Exchange and I'm gonna purchase something that many of you probably haven't heard from or seen in many, many years. This is a Vecna Skull, and it can be used an infinite number of times to boost your magic level between two and 11 levels. You can use it once every seven minutes. So for the next chunk of this challenge, I'm gonna try to get by without using overloads. And instead, I'm gonna be relying on this thing. Dude, it's the death ball of death for me, you know? Wait, I don't even know what happens at this point. Does it reset? Oh god, it does! Move! Move! 
No. Move again. Move. I am not willing to overload. Hard mode twins is insanely difficult. Come on. Got it. 200 magic logs. You know what? That's actually a really good drop. Once again, that's another 250k. Dude, why is Greg attacking so friggin' fast? <laughs> what is this? Wait, I hit that one. Yeah, it's better to let those ones go in because it's the poison ones. So I actually want those ones to go in because I am healing based off the poison damage taken. See, the heals are getting bigger. So I actually want the far, the far spirit to get in every time. Oh my god, not the close one. Oh, look how much I'm healing right now. Look at the heals. Okay, this was a great strategy. Poison Purge is an elite aura. And that is hard mode Gret. Huh? Oh god. All right. Wait, why is Greg healing so freaking much? Oh no. And seven salvage. How much is that? Uh, That is 200,000 GP. That is actually beautiful. All right. I honestly, I was worried about the four hard mode uh, God Wars 2s. Really, really stoked that we got them done. With all four challenge mode God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses out of the way, it's time to head to Araxora. And I cannot believe that that's the next boss we're at. But fortunately for us, I've got a bone blowpipe, a set of dragonhide armor, and a dream. So let's go and take on Rax. What path is it? Oh, tell me it's not 1-3. <laughs> it is 1-3. Okay, great. I know that's early, but I want him to start spawning minions. That's good for me if he does. So all the spiders are dealt with, so I should be able to more or less no food from here. All right, my yak is completely empty, but we haven't had to waste an overload. Also, we're going to do some clever use of game mechanics so that we only get magic attacks. Just makes the kill way safer. We're okay, we're okay, we're okay. Got it. That is an Araxi kill. Done and dusted. <laughs> Credit to the Opal Bolts E. All right, please give me Onyxes. Come on, please. <sighs> Bro, I've got to do a Zuck run in like two bosses. And things just keep ramping up because after Araxor, I now need to solo Nex. 76% accuracy with me being overloaded. In order to do this, I'm going to use one interesting mechanic to get through the blood phase. During Nex's siphon animation, she actually loses target on your character. And what that means is that if you're quick and you can hide away from Nex's line of sight, after the siphon ends, she won't be able to see you. What this is going to allow me to do is kill all of the Blood Reavers without Nex progressing in her phase or attacking. At the end of every cycle, Nex heals for the entire amount of life points on the Reavers, so that's why sometimes you'll have an infinite Blood Phase where Nex keeps healing and healing. But as long as I kill the Reavers every single time, Nex isn't actually going to heal at all. This guy is a freaking knower. Beautiful method. Dude, I'm freaking doing it! Look at the running! And outside of that little bit of clever use of game mechanics to cheese through the Blood Phase, the rest of the kill was smooth sailing. But unfortunately, the loot was absolutely terrible again. And I'm really starting to feel like RNG is not on my side here. This is just not going well at all. We, we like, actually, we need to get something here, or I, I, I think the run could be completely dead. With next completed, it's time to go to Raksha. And this is going to be extremely difficult. I have a lot of experience doing Raksha with very low tier gear setups. I even made a guide using nothing but chaotic crossbows. And my gear this time around is somehow even worse than that. I don't have access to enchanted bolts, and I also don't even have a good way to clear the pools. So this is going to be an absolute fight for my life. Let's go. I have a 100% hit chance with no overload. As long as I don't miss any prayer flicks, I don't know that I actually lose HP at this boss. I've only done 100k... Oh, move. So if I get P1 shockwaves, we might need to overload. Shockwaves are the next special. Yeah, I have to teleport. <laughs> As if I got shockwaves... My flicking has been perfect. I'm soul splitting the maximum amount of damage. This is the hardest one so far. By by far. Dude, if I fail this, this could be like rip the run. Straight up. I, I just need damage, man. I just need this to phase now. No, just phase it. Just phase it. Just phase it, please. Got it. Okay. We're eight minutes into this kill. 20k? Dude, I can't do 20,000 damage. Wait, please. Come on. Got it. So next, when I get this a second time, because I'm going to, I'm going to hide behind the post instead. Okay. Eleven minutes. Dude, this challenge, I think the, the lack of loot and the bad luck has put us in a position here where we now have an unreasonably difficult challenge. There we go. All right. 25k. 
13 minutes for this kill. Oh my goodness. All right, what do you got for your boss? Okay, that's not good. Actually, you know what? 560k is better than it could have. You know what? For Raksha Commons, I think we did okay. He's trying to eat me. Bro, what is this? Hello? Heading out of Raksha, we have a massive opportunity because the next boss on our list is Normal Mode Zuck. Before we head to Zuck, I actually have enough GP to buy myself an Obliteration Staff. They've crashed in price like crazy ever since they were added to the Wildy Event Loot Table. This is really big for us because it's a tier 87 staff and it's likely the best staff we're going to be able to get our hands on for the entire rest of this challenge. Assuming we can complete them, the waves are going to be worth an absolute ton of GP and as long as I can complete this Zuck run without having to leave or bank or use the checkpoint system, this is going to result in me getting a magic Zuck cape. The only problem is, if you take a look at my gear, this is probably the lowest tier gear Zuck run ever completed. I'm wearing tier 50 mystics with an abyssal wand and orb that aren't even augmented. If I can get this done, this is going to breathe a ton of new life into the challenge. But unfortunately, getting it done might be completely impossible. I am going to have to absolutely pop off here. Use the Vecna Skull, true. There's the Vecna Skull, plus 11 stats, big. And then you know what I do? I, I meta at the start of every wave to build stacks without losing runes. That's how we do this. Oh wait, these are different because it's normal mode. Oh my God, it's close. Unlucky, that was close though. All right, we go again. Hold, no way. Wait, I'm actually juiced. Another wave down. I've got three elder troves too because I'm taking so long. <gasps> wait, that's actually really, really good. You know what, one more. <laughs> I got a yak in my yak, so let's let's do this the right way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then as soon as my HP's full again, or my adrenaline's full, we're going to go, and we're going to try to chain the next two waves together. I also do have overloads. I just don't really want to waste them. I feel like I need HP again. To be fair, this is like the hardest wave in the whole run, so maybe it's okay. Oh, he's poisoned. Oh, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> I forgot that it was a challenge wave next, but hey, this is second challenge. So we're actually, we're making good progress here. We're good. Oh my God. Okay. This is so freaking difficult, man. I've got it. Come on. I did it. Dude, I'm a juicer. Got it. That's it. That's a flawless run if I can get the kill on this. <laughs> Let's freaking go, dude. Three out of three on the challenges. Dude, we're actually so sick with it. It's not even funny. Okay, that was great. We are going to the flawless dimension. Yeah, we just really want this done in as few cycles as possible. With the caveat, of course, that I can't afford to spend runes. No way! A thousand life points? Oh, that actually messes it up so bad. Okay, it's suck time. Okay, this is the whole run right here. Okay, so I just need to be careful that we do that right every time. Oh my god, my heart. No, it's not done yet. I just lost all my HP boost because it's been an hour. Uh, I can walk bleeds on this one. I think that one's good. There's one more cycle still. Just Cade, just Cade, just Cade. Play it safe. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I clutched. I clutched. I clutched. I clutched. Get it. Done. We've got this. We've actually got this. Come on. I need a drop too. I freaking need a drop. I deserve a drop. Come on, Zuck. Let's freaking go, dude. Bang. Okay. No unique. I got a chaos die reroll. And I got an igneous stone, which is by far the most important thing here, which means I have 5.2 million coins of loot. And I have a Zuck cape and an elite glue. Oh my god. And 10 troves as well. First things first. Let's make ourselves a Zuck cape. Done.
Come on, dude! After Zuck, we've got an elite clue to do, and we also managed to get ourselves a Chaos Die reroll token, which means later on in the challenge, once we get to Zamorak, I'll have the option to reroll my loot for a chance at another drop. So we just have to take this. But hey, next elite clue, we've got a reroll. So it's all good. Next up, it's time for Elite Dungeons 2 and 1. Provided I can complete them, this should be a really good opportunity to make some money, because although it isn't likely that I get a massive roll and I make hundreds of millions of coins here, both of these dungeons are very consistent. So even if I min roll absolutely everything, I'm still gonna be coming out of this with an extra 10 or 15 million coins to work with. I believe it's Astalarn time. Let's go. Okay, I think having an overload is helping a lot, actually. Yeah, my magma's hitting like five times more. My wild magic just double zeroed. I'm gonna cry. Please do damage. Dude, it has to be said, Astalar is a scary boss. I got raw lobsters. <laughs> 147 raw lobsters. Alrighty. Dude, doing 600,000 damage with this setup, it's just like not so good. I'm gonna meta for drops. Now would be a great time for a codex of some kind. What do you got, free boss? Um, <laughs> three dragon bones. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing so well here. Honestly, like this is. This is not going optimally. After cruising through Astalarn and Veraklith, it's time for the Blackstone Dragon. And one of the more annoying parts of the fight is the part with the Black Hands. But fortunately for me, because I'm using magic, I can actually save spot all of the Black Hands. As long as you stand on any of the four diamonds in the arena and you have enough attack range to do that, you're not gonna be hit by the Black Hands at all. We're at the part of the boss fight where I get to AFK in the corner. Honestly, very nice of them to add a built-in designated e-dating e point into the boss fight. Yeah, I don't think I need to overload. We're just gonna go without. Slight concern about getting clapped, but I have a lot of food and I would rather just eat my food than waste an overload dose. Food is infinitely cheaper. Five energies. Are you kidding? We min rolled. After getting the minimum roll of energies from Elite Dungeon 2, it's time to go to Elite Dungeon 1 and hope that we don't have the same fate there. Dude, the little backflip they do when they, when they die is so funny looking. So it's funny because this boss on release was like a waste of a boss fight, but now if I get a fishy treat, that's actually great for me. Wait, I just got minions. <laughs> Wait, y'all see that dodge? The little dude, I signed to a minion. No. 26 Onyx dust doubled. Unironically, a pretty good drop. I got an elite clue from a lucky charm. And I have a reroll because it's my third elite clue. That is an actually massive drop. The lucky charms are totally worth it. It feels so weird to be clearing every mob of the dungeon, but just for that clue scroll, that's totally worth it. You also have to think that there's master clue chance. Now, I don't know if I could even do a master clue, but if I could, that could be a, a huge, huge win. Let's check the chest. 1.7 mil! Isn't that explosive components for crackling? Wait, I actually think that's really good too. So the gunpowder we can use for crackling, the elite clue we can solve, and we get to reroll the loot as well. And we've got like a mill of alkables. That hit me? I ran. This is not going great. I'm not going to lie. All right. My overload is worn. That's okay. Alrighty. That is a Masuda kill. Locked and loaded. What do you got for your boss? Uh, 16 Onyx Dust. <laughs> That's it. All right. That was not the most worthwhile thing of our life, but it's fine. Yeah. So this, the average loot here is 17 mil. If we get a high roll, we make 100 mil. If we get a low roll, the worst we would do here is 5 million coins from Serio. The, the worst drop here is, is still very good. I would much rather he nibble at my feet than do what he's doing right now. Did you see that? That was a paw. We're fine. I performed a cat displacement. So the aim is to get this one completely down. If I can kill this one completely, we're kind of in an okay spot. If I can't, I don't really know how we're going to do this. Got it. Absolutely beautiful. So this is gonna be a three cycle. I think I could have done it without the mines too, but I'm, I'm glad we had mines. This is just to give me a speed boost into the next set. And then we just need to make sure we hit all of the blobs, which we will. Why did the black crystal drop bones? That's a really good question. <laughs> it is in fact not a boneless crystal. Whoa, whoa, stop. <gasps> what? That one went up. No, <laughs> did it really? I think it did. Please, this would be a very clutch opportunity to get a big drop, high value, just not a mineral. What do you got for your boss? I got eight scales. As if we mineral both elite dungeons? That could be the run right there. Still, it's still 12 mil though. Remember, it's still 12 mil.
And as expected, continuing the theme of this challenge and getting absolutely no luck for drops, we min-ruled Elite Dungeon 1 as well. But still, despite the terrible scale drops, we managed to make about 12 million coins, which is an absolute ton at this stage in the challenge, and it's going to go a long way to making sure we can keep the run going. We also got an elite clue, which I promptly solved, but even though I have a reroll, there's actually a master clue in here, which is a massive opportunity to make myself some money. So instead of using the reroll, we're going to save that for later on in the challenge, and it's time to complete this master. Alright, I don't feel good about this, but we've claimed the master clue. Alright, we've got a master casket! 2.9 mil! Um, I mean, we made profit! I know I've said it a few times before, but this is probably where this run is going to end. Solo Rise of the Six is an incredibly difficult boss fight, and it might just be completely impossible with the setup that I'm currently limited to. The reason for this is I'm not allowed to use a Salve Amulet that would give me 20% additional accuracy and damage. But you might be thinking, why not just take the boss fight slower like you have at a lot of the other bosses prior to this? But unfortunately with Rise of the Six, you can't. Because if you don't clear out all six brothers in a certain time frame, what's going to happen is they're going to all respawn, and they're going to continually do this forever until you die. So with that said, let's get our Shadow Nihil for a little bit of extra hit chance, let's get ourselves our Dragon Hide, and I'm also going to spend all the money I have on a pair of Fleeting Boots as well as a Decimation Bow. It's got a special attack that will make some of my abilities work in an area of effect, and I'm hoping that we're going to have enough damage to get this thing done. Wish me luck. Bro! Why is my running so bad? Bro, my character's pausing every two seconds. This is going to be really hard. They all came back alive. This might unironically be it for me. Awesome. <sighs> Let's just buy a shipment of Barrow's Totems. I'm going to need them. Okay, I, for what it's worth, I think this is the wrong side to be starting on, but insta-spinning. Great. And I'm dead. <laughs> also remember, reset is in 20 minutes. So after reset, we probably get a more advantageous situation. Because ideally, if Carol and Aram are on the same side, it's way easier. Are you kidding me? Toreg insta-dinked me right away. Okay, I think that was winnable, though. Let's drop 50k for an A-pot. I think an A-pot might save the run. I think that was winnable, though. And they're all back alive. Attempt seven. Bro, how are you spinning? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. That was one freaking game tick. I hate this boss. I hate this boss. I hate this boss. I hate this boss. And I'm out of damage. I was so close. And they're all back a third time. Oh my, relax, relax, chill. And now I'm getting bombed. Okay, that is just obscene. I love that that hit me, even though I'm not standing in it. Carol, the second I attack him, he starts bombing, <laughs> bro. And I'm in the Shadow Realm and I'm bonked. <sighs> this stupid boss is so stupid. This stupid boss is so stupid. Okay. I mean, as you can tell, this isn't one of my strongest bosses, but still, oh my God. Dude, he's spinning. It's not even It's not even close, dude. Leave me alone! If I was allowed to salve amulet, we would have first tried this thing. Straight up. What? What do you mean? He's skied! All right, the death cost is, uh, you know, more a sting on the pride than it is on the coin pouch. I, 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 I actually feel like we can do this. Okay, it's close. It's close. It's close. Please! I'm splashing! Carol had a thousand life points. Okay, hot take. This is not good. Oh, I'm getting dinked. Okay, well, I am frustrated. And I lose. Why am I getting clapped by all the Melee Brothers? Are you kidding me? I, w I lost a tick. I did it a tick late. Backseat berries in the chat going, oh, when I do my solo rots with a Carol's crossbow, it goes much better. Oh, instantly bombing. Okay, cool, great. Awesome, cool, cool, cool. Oh, I'm getting speared. Okay, I'm dead. Sorry, this is dead. Rise of the Six is an Avengers level threat. It really is. I got bonked. Okay. That's really unlucky. Onslaught. Please. 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 Onslaught. Let's go. Solo Rot's done. Boom, baby. Let's go. We got him with the Onslaught. That took an hour and 40 oh, minutes. The run continues. The Onslaught did it. Oh my god. Carol? I'm shaking. That was so... That was the hardest boss so far by a long shot. What do you got for me, boss? 
one energy. Dude, we've mineraled everything. We've mineraled Siri, we've mineraled Dragon Kin Lab. I definitely lost money on rots if I get this energy out. It's only worth a mil, but that's fine. We did it. That's the important thing. Dude, 6,000 GP for my main drop, but you know what? It's fine. After over 90 minutes of attempts, we're finally able to get our solo rot skill. But unfortunately, wasting 90 minutes at a boss also means we wasted 90 minutes of supplies at a boss, and supplies are costly. So this has been a major setback, and we're not in a very good spot moving forward. But forward is where we're going. First to the Calphite King, where we can try our luck on getting a Dragor weapon. And then after that, we're going to be hitting up Normal Mode Zamorak. Calphite King is a pretty easy boss with lower tier gear because as long as you know how to properly dodge the green attack, there isn't really anything this boss can do that can kill you. Unfortunately for me, I've done a lot of solo Calphite King, so this should be a walk in the park. Let's recall if your boys still got it. That's one. That's two. That's the freedom. He's green. And that is how you solo tank a green. Beautiful. I feel like it's kind of implied, but I do have to say, I freaking hate this boss, man. It's gonna be sharks. It always is. Unless... Okay. All right, well... See, there have been so many bosses we've run into that, like, this could save the run, you know? You get a big scale drop from ED2 or ED1. Done. You get a codex from ED2. Beautiful. You get a shield from Rots. Challenge over. Get a Drygo from KK challenge over and i quite literally got 8000 coins from calphite king and 5000 coins from solo rots before we hit up normal with zamorak i'm gonna buy myself some ganodermic i don't think we're gonna need it for this boss in particular but having some magic tank gear that works really well with animate dead is just gonna be a good idea moving forward because as this challenge goes further and further along the more likely it is that i'm gonna be having to take full ganodermic all the way to the end game that is a normal mode zamorak kill completed Maybe I'll get a good drop here. What do you got? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Is that bad? I think that's bad. Uh, but what won't be the end of the run is an 100% rage Talo skill. I do that with my with my eyes closed in my sleep, completely and utterly free. Next up, we've got 100% rage Talos. And this is a really good check for how low my damage output really is with this setup. Hit the Onslaught. Shout out to Rots. How am I going to do a 4k kill? How am I going to do a 1k kill? Do I really have to overload for P5? Okay, I'm overloading again. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, this is not giving me a lot of hope. I'm not gonna lie. We need to get some drops of some kind. I, I, like, straight up, I cannot deal damage. All right, that's an 100% Telo skill done. And also, my faith in me being able to beat this challenge also decreasing. You know what? I'll take 960 ends. You could do worse. It's time to grab our snorkel and get in it to Elite Dungeon 3. Solo ED3 is really interesting because if you hit that lucky 1 in 55 drop and get yourself an Eldritch Crossbow piece, all of a sudden we're in a great spot to complete the challenge. But if we don't, the regular loot from this dungeon is absolutely terrible. So hopefully we can get that lucky drop. But either way, it's time to solo the Crassian Leviathan, Terrakit the Necromancer, and then finally the Ambassador. I will say, I'm decently okay with this kill time. Wait, that's it? I've been grinding every single mob at ED3, and I've got a total of three relics. All right. That is Terrakit. Done and dusted. 36 salvage doubled. Not doubled. 36 salvage individualized. That's still really good. Dude, we've made no money from the mobs. Like, what? what is this? Big res. I'm disgusting. I was absolutely nasty. See you, idiot. You first. <laughs> I really got a darting shadow. After Ambi, it's time to go to RuneScape's newest boss, which is of course, Vorkath. We've got our anti-fire and our undead slayer perk, but still, the restriction of not being allowed a salve amulet makes this boss extremely difficult, and I actually failed to kill normal mode Vorkath multiple times in a row. After an hour of attempts, we were finally able to get a kill, and that is absolutely terrifying to me, because in a few bosses, we're gonna have to try hard mode Vorkath, and at this point, I think there's absolutely no way we're gonna be able to get that done. So we really need to get some loot, and we need it now. 72% hit chance. Why? I'm overloaded. I'm using tier 99 magic prayer. I think hard mode Vorkath might be the end of the run, honestly. I don't have an anti-fire! Oh god! <laughs> what? No! This boss is straight No. What an awful boss fight. 16... 16 minutes! The problem is this. Where's hard mode Vorkath? Dude, we need to make like 50 mil in these few bosses. 
to be able to do this. Like, like straight up. We need to make at least 50 mil or the run is going to die at hard mode for Gath. <laughs> We're doomed. Luckily, after normal mode for Gath, we get to chill out at the Arch Glacier. But this time, it's not going to be at 0% in rage. It's actually going to be at 1000% in rage. What? <laughs> I forgot to switch my prayers from Vorkath. Dude, is it just me? Or have the last five bosses all ended with me having no food left? 1527. Let's go. You know what? 300k is probably better than what we could have got here. I will take 39 Hydrix Bolt Tips. After Arch Glacier, we're staying in the Elder God Wars theme, and we're going to be heading to Hard Mode Karapak. The first three phases of this boss fight are going to be very easy, but phase four might take a couple attempts and is extremely difficult to do with lower tier gear. Because I can't really do a lot of damage, it's going to be hard to limit the damage that I'm taking from all of the echoes as well as Karapak himself. But if I'm able to manage a kill, hard mode Karapak has a 1 in 147 chance to drop a piece of a fractured staff of Armadol, and a single one of those pieces goes for hundreds of millions of gold. So this is a massive boss that could turn the tides of this entire challenge. Like each time we got it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, 2.7 mil. Or, you know, it could drop just about nothing and not move the needle whatsoever, which is, of course, what happened. With Hard Mode Care Pack completed, we are actually into the final 10 bosses of the Nuzlocke Challenge. That's the good news, but the bad news is these 10 bosses get harder and harder as we progress. And I'm telling you guys right now, there are bosses on this list that there is zero chance I'm going to be able to do with the current gear that I have. So this run could be ending at any moment. Next up, it's time for Hard Mode Zuck. And this is going to be quite a challenge, because unlike for Normal Mode Zuck, where I had a ton of opportunity to rest between the waves and continually use Regenerate, to make sure I was starting every wave with full life points, we're not gonna have the option for that because we've got these massive walls of fire that are gonna be spawning throughout the fight on a random timer. Kilsa, the run is bad, yes, but it could be worse. Hello? But still, the one thing that's working in my favor is my gear is significantly better than it was last time. And beyond that, we don't have to do this run flawlessly and we are able to bank at the Zuck fight if we run low on supplies. Leaving during the Zuck fight will not reset my progress, but it will give me a slightly lower drop chance on Unique. So we're going to try to do this thing in one shot, but if it doesn't work out, that's going to be completely fine. Bro, how is it this bad I'm on wave two? Oh my god, the vents are following me! Why are the vents following me? Stop! <laughs> this is the worst experience of my life. <laughs> this is the most unfeasible thing I've ever attempted, I think. <laughs> Bro, killing one of these dudes is hard. And then I res at 100 every time he hits me at 5k through prayer. I can't hit him. I can't hit. I can't hit. I can't hit. I can't hit. What the fuck? It sniped me. Done. Flawless on the first challenge. That's pretty big. What? Bu the bat took my adren. Flawless again. See, I'm definitely getting better. That's two in a row. Bro, these hitboxes are just awful. I can't believe we're able to get all the challenges down with this setup, but move. Please get it. Let's go! Okay, when do I get to teleport? We're good, we're good, we're good. So because pizza time doesn't scale, pizza time should be very free. You know what? This has me wondering if I could have done Zuck without teleporting out to get the better drop chance. It actually feels sort of no foodable. It's okay though, the drop chance change is so minuscule, like it barely makes a difference. Oh, broadcast! I got nothing. Okay, well, challenge could be really, really tough. You know what? 11 mil in the chest is really solid though for a Zuck run. Any droppers? Are you kidding me? Now, nah, what are the odds? What am I gonna do with ultimate? Watch me get it again. Nah, no, no, no. Please? What? No! What? Are you kidding me? What? Uh, precise! 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 Now it's time for 100% Enraged Zamrock, and I don't think Phase 7 is going to be too difficult because the life points at this Enrage are relatively low, so I think we can go in with the exact gear we have and absolutely face roll it. I should overload. We're fine. Whew! Alright, ready? Bang. Alright! 
that is 100% Zami completed. Any greens? So I also did get a reroll from Zuck. So I could reroll potentially. With the kill complete, we now need to make a decision on if we want to reroll the loot. I'm feeling pretty good about the amount of money in the chest right now, but the reroll is also going to give us an extra chance at a unique drop that could change the entire challenge. In a perfect world, it would make sense to save this reroll and use it as late as possible in the challenge because the higher in raid you use it at, the more value you're getting on average. But unfortunately, in two bosses time, we've got hard mode Vorkath, and I don't think we can take on hard mode Vorkath with our current setup, so it's time to risk it for the biscuit. But uh, no, we're going to reroll. Please. <laughs> All right, we've now rerolled to lose one and a half million coins. Awesome. <laughs> Calculated. Woohoo! 200 life points! Let's freaking go, dude. GG's. 23 minutes of straight gaming. If the run ends here, I'm pretty proud. What do you got for me, boss? You know what? Actually, 78 crystal keys is pretty good. After a short, quick, easy 22 minute 2000 percent enrage Arch Glacier kill with the worst gear on planet Earth, it's time for the dreaded Hard Mode Vorkath. And we're gonna have to spend some money on this one. Hard Mode Vorkath is an impossibly difficult boss to do with lower tier gear because you take a ton of random, unavoidable damage. You've got Zimmer Eagle attacking you with Necromancy the entire fight. And on top of that, you've got Vorkath attacking you with Dragonfire as well as magic. So there's no good way to prayer flick. You just need to take a ton of damage. And because of that, I think the only way we're gonna proceed through this boss fight without almost immediately running out of food and then dying is if we can take this thing slow and low using defensive abilities while we have a Blood Reaver that is continually healing us. The Blood Reaver is an extremely overpowered healing familiar. And the only thing that keeps it ever so slightly balanced is how expensive it is to upkeep. These scrolls cost thousands of GP each, and for this one singular Vorkath kill, we might need more than a hundred scrolls. This is one that I really don't want to mess up, because if I die later on in this kill after I've used a bunch of scrolls, that is a massive sunk cost, and that's possibly millions of coins that I'll be throwing into the garbage. So we really need to get this one done on the first try. Spam those damn defensives. Heal the Reaver, I got it. Camp the shield. This would be a really funny time to find out that Vorkath actually respawns. <laughs> yeah, dude, the thing about this boss that's so scary is you'll just take a random 10k to literally nothing. Holy sh! I'm praying wrong! <gasps> oh my god, that was a big mistake. Alright, Vorkath. See you, idiot. The Nuzlocke continues! Let's go, dude! Come on! Come on! 20 minutes and 35 seconds! And after a 20 minute fight for my life, we managed to get the hard mode Vorkath kill done. And now we've got our loot trove. If there's something big in here, this could change the entire challenge. Let's loot it. In three, in two, in one. Okay, so that's absolutely terrible. And the next boss we need to do is Solo Solak, which is gonna be no easier than this, that's for sure. As if I got triple stone spirits and double seeds. I got three stone spirit rolls and two seed rolls. As far as non-enraged bosses go, Solo Solak is the second most difficult boss fight in the entire game, second only to the next boss on the list, which is Solo Virago. It has tons of mechanics, intense DPS checks, and just overall deals a ton of damage. So I have no idea how we're gonna get through this. Initially, what I wanted to do is use a decimation bow and use Bic Arrow stacks to deal lots of poison damage. But after doing some testing, Bic Arrows don't work very well without Cinderbane Gloves, because without Cinderbane Gloves, you only get a singular poison hit splat every 10 seconds, which is nowhere near good enough to get us through the DPS checks that are later on in the fight. So after messing around with some attempts there and making no progress, it's time to full send on magic. Get comfy. This part, uh, this part takes a bit. <laughs> You might look at my gear and be thinking there is absolutely no way you can do 200,000 damage in 25 seconds, which is what's needed to complete the final phase of the boss fight. And I would completely agree with you. There is absolutely no way we can deal that amount of damage. And because of that, we need to get a little bit technical here. 
Solak has a hard hit cap at 200,000 life points, but it actually doesn't activate until one singular hit takes Solak over that threshold. So hypothetically, what we could do here is we could use the Shatter ability that can deal up to 30,000 damage, and what we're going to do is we're going to use it as close to 201,000 life points as possible. If we hit a 30k with that final hit splat, instead of having to deal 200,000 damage, we'll only have to deal 171,000 damage. And then after that, before I head into phase 4, I can restack 10 storm shards, and then immediately we're effectively starting phase 4 with about 140,000 damage to do. But my gear is absolutely terrible, and I don't even think that's going to be good enough. So there's one other thing we can do. As soon as Solak's hit cap starts working, Solak is going to take 1 100th of the regular damage. So if we used to do 100,000 damage a minute, congrats, we're now doing 1,000 damage a minute. But damage is still damage, and I think with the correct amount of prayer flicking and the right rotation, I can survive infinitely on phase 3, slowly but surely whittling away at Solak's life point. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm going to stay here, slowly whittling away at the HP until it's low enough that I think I can complete the fourth phase. And then as soon as I'm ready, we're going to finally go in, take out Erethor, and we're going to do our DPS check, but significantly easier than it otherwise would be. Hopefully I don't make any mistakes and we can get this thing done. G staff. Staff. I did it! Oh my god, I did it! That was so close! Oh my god, the Nuzlocke continues! 64 out of 70! That was so friggin' close! Oh my god, I thought it was over when I messed up my tsunami. I actually thought it was over when I sausage the tsunami. We freaking did it! Ready to get a single... Dude, we have min-rolled on every single boss. If, if this is the end of the line, could I just say we have to try this again at some point? Might not be in a week, might not be in a month. But uh, we've just had terrible drops everywhere we've gone. Please give me something. My hands are shaking. This is the entire run right here. Because I don't know that I can do 500% Zami. And the boss after that is Solarago, which I know I can't do. In three. In two. In one! <laughs> Seeds again! I, I couldn't even get wide. And the, the fact that we've done every single one of these bosses on commons alone, I'm proud. I'm proud. After an hour of work for my set of Irit Seeds and, of course, a Grimoire page, things don't get any easier because it's time to do 500% Enrage Zamorak. But that's eight time worn, yeah? Okay. Oh my goodness! Wait, that's a rare perk! That's rarer than getting a drop from Zuck! Okay, I, I, I gotta stop. Please phase it. Oh my god. Okay. I just need to be structured here. I'm making uh, I'm making stupid mistakes right now. Because my gear is, respectfully, not the best, there is no way we're going to be able to one cycle phase 7. So instead, we're going to plan to do a two cycle. Oh my god, I got the streamer runes! Yes! The way this works is, if you can manage to survive all of the bombs and all of the melee hits on the first cycle, you can then take your time in Infernus, reapply 10 Storm Shards, and then you can set yourself up for a really strong DPS rotation. If the bomb on the second cycle hits me, I'm going to take 100,000 damage, but hopefully, with the right rotation and the right setup, I think we should be able to get it done. Bye! 500% Zami, locked and loaded! Invent full of runes, no problem at all! And no greed sparkles. That's okay. That's okay. This should still be money. This should still be a ton of money right here. We do not have a reroll, worth noting. We used it on 100%, which was probably a mistake. What do you got, free boss? Are you kidding me? No shot! We rolled triple seeds and stone spirits! That's the worst 500k Zami loot I've ever seen in my life. That's worse than we got from 100%. This run is absolutely cursed! And now we've got to do a thousand percent of rage Telos. Well, we got to work with what we got, and we don't got much. It's time to go to a thousand percent in rage Telos. 
And if you remember back to earlier in this video, we were barely able to even do an 100% enrage Telos kill. And going up from 100% to 1000% is gonna make things significantly more difficult. Okay, we signed P1. For one, at 1000% enraged Telos, Telos is gonna have the maximum amount of life points possible on every single phase, including phase five. But on top of this, if we don't have the damage output to skip mechanics on phase four, we're also gonna have to deal with a rock fall that is gonna be inside of the fonts on the fourth phase. And then when we get to phase five, unfortunately, the immortality ability gets turned off conveniently at exactly 1000% enraged. So we won't even be able to cheese phase five with immortality. If we can't deal enough damage to kill the boss, every single cycle of minions, we're gonna have to, while tanking Telos, bring all of the minions to the respective font of the right color kill four minions within range of the font, and use that as a protective shield to save us from the insta-kill mechanic. Because of power creep, this is a mechanic that hasn't had to be done in many, many years. But fortunately for me, if I go way back in time to my PVMing many years ago, I still know how to do this. And I'm hoping that if I can make it to phase five, the muscle memory is gonna take over and we're gonna be able to get it done. Help! How are you not phased? You're 1000 HP on phasing. Leave me alone! This boss sucks. This boss sucks. This boss sucks. Help me. Bye. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That signed me. <sighs> it's so hard. Are you kidding me? I got nuked because the beam spawned right on him. <laughs> so tilted. <laughs> My auto splashed. I double zeroed! Dude, someone at Jagex is straight up cursing me. At least I made it to B5. Where's my prayer? Okay, it's fine. Like, it's definitely looked better. Like, and I'm, I'll be the first to admit that. I don't even care. Let's freaking go, dude. I'm actually a chef. Are you kidding me? Absolutely nasty. That was straight up dirt nasty the whole way through. I'm actually so fired up. With a thousand percent of rage Chalice out of the way, I am extremely happy with this run so far. We have not done very well in terms of loot, but still, I think we've done a great job to make the most of it. But I think, unfortunately, at a certain point, all good things must come to an end, and there's a very real chance that this happens for Solo Virago. Solo Virago is one of the most mechanically challenging boss fights in the entire game. And not only are their mechanics difficult, but it also requires mitigating a ton of damage while also dealing a ton at the same time. And I don't really have the gear or the setup to do either of those two things. And beyond this, Virago is one of the tankiest bosses in the entire game. What this means is with my lower tier setup, I'm not gonna be able to do very much damage to Virago no matter what I do. Even with the perfect rotation, my damage is gonna be so severely mitigated that I think this is gonna be extremely tough. But still, I'm not giving up here, and it's time to go all in for one last push at this boss fight. If I can get through Solo Virago, I think there's a real chance I win this entire challenge. But it's going to be extremely difficult, and it might even be impossible. When you're looking at my inventory, the reason it's entirely full of runes is because I need to be able to spellbook swap to Ancients and use the Disruption Shield spell to mitigate some pushback on the fifth phase. And unfortunately, we didn't make enough money for a single rune pouch, so I've got to have all of these runes in my invent, which also means I don't have very much room for food. I also need to bring a full range switch with me so that I can apply Blackstone arrows if I make it to the fifth phase, because this is going to be the only way for me to get my hit chance high enough to successfully push the boss. And unfortunately, this setup has costed me almost all of my money. So if I can't get this done on the very first attempt, that's going to be the end of the Nuzlocke. Because if I die and I lose my Penance Powder, I do not have enough GP to buy any back. All right, team, this is it. The grand finale. I what? Okay. Nah, nah, nah. 
Nah, absolutely not. Bad start, bad start, bad start. I literally have 44 minutes on my Nihil, and then I don't have enough money to buy another Nihil. So this is like, this is straight up, this is it, but... Virago. So anyway, I just started blasting. <laughs> Bro, as if I just took damage from the wall. Wait, if it hits me again, I sign. E Stop! Perfect. Perfect HP. Dude, I feel like this whole challenge would have been different if Excalibur was allowed. How am I... Dude, how am I gonna bring him down? Oh, God. <laughs> Alright, I just did my entire... Every damaging ability I have, I just used. I did it! Oh my God. Okay, cool, cool, cool. No, I'm so stupid. Run. Dude, Animate Dead is doing nothing. Oh, that's not fair. Ugh. He teleported me. And unfortunately, on phase three, that is exactly what happened. After an absolutely miraculous run and punching well above my weight, Solo Virago has bested me, and that is the end of the Nuzlocke. Unfortunately, I just wasn't good enough to get it done. I'm really, really proud to end on the 1k Telos. That was a nasty kill. To do a triple font rotation, I'm happy ending there. Solo Virago, it just wasn't in the cards. Even though I failed, that's not the end of our journey. Because I can't be the only one who is so curious to see if our fate would have been better had we been allowed to use Necromancy. So look out for that in a future video. And speaking of future videos, if you want to make sure that you don't miss an upload, hitting that subscribe button is the best way to do that. And outside of that, this video took an absolute ton of time to make. So if you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you could let me know in the comment section down below or by leaving a like. And outside of that, I hope you're all well and I will see you again very soon. I did promise something, which is that if I lose, which I did, I owe you guys a billion coins. That is a crisp billion coins paid out because I wasn't good enough.